If you've wanted to get into Wi-Fi hacking, it can be pretty challenging to find a safe and legal target to hack. Today, we'll show you how to make one on a single ESP8266 microcontroller on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you're getting into Wi-Fi hacking, it can be difficult to find a safe and legal network for you to hack. But today, we're going to use a single ESP8266 microcontroller to create just that. Now, for this to work, we'll need a computer with Arduino installed, and we'll also need a D1 Mini, or maybe a Node MCU ESP8266-based development board. And you can pick one of these up from the Nullbyte link in the description. If you get confused, you can also go to that link to find a full article with lots of troubleshooting tips. Now, what we're going to do is flash an Arduino sketch onto this board that allows us to play both sides of a Wi-Fi conversation, and basically simulate a device joining a Wi-Fi network. From my computer, I will listen for this and attempt to crack the password, so let's see if we can play both sides of the Wi-Fi conversation on a single ESP board. Today, we're going to get started by creating a handshake using an ESP8266. And our proof of concept today for showing off how to do this is going to be located on my GitHub here, although this is a project that is a collaboration between myself and Spacehoon, so a lot of thanks to him for getting this up and running for me after I came up with the concept. So our goal is to be able to actually manage to crack a handshake that we capture from our wireless card. And in order to make sure that this works, we're going to be flashing this sketch here, um, the handshake injector, uh, <laughs> via Arduino into a ESP8266 microcontroller. And I recommend having a D1 Mini for this project, although you can also work with a Node MCU or other ESP8266 based board. Now, what we'll need to do is we can download this and open it. And before we'll be able to flash it over, uh, you can see I've opened the file here. We'll need to make sure that we have the correct uh, board installed. So in preferences under Arduino, we need to go to the additional board manager URL. And you can see that I have several installed here. And we'll need to make sure that we have the ESP8266 based one, um, which is the stable right here. So when this is correctly inputted into Arduino IDE, then it will pull down all the different ESP8266 based boards. And this will allow us to select it in the next screen. So I'll press OK. And you can also go to the Nullbyte article to get that exact link. Uh, and after going to Tools and then the Board Manager, I'll be able to see that there are a variety of different boards available to me now after my boards finish updating. So I'll go to Board and then Board Manager. And then in the board manager, I'll just type in ESP8266. So you'll want to locate the uh, ESP8266 by community, and then go ahead and click here to install. I've already got it, so it would remove it for me. But once it's installed, you'll be able to go into tools, and then under boards, you'll be able to find a section that has all the supported ESP8266 based boards. And for mine, I'm going to select the D1 Mini, and I will also need to select the port that it's connected to. And this might already automatically be connected, but if you're on a Linux system, for example, then it can be a little frustrating to find this. You might have to run dmessage or something to um, find that out. Um, so here I have selected the uh, Wemos D1 Mini uh, under the ESP8266 base boards. I've also uh, indicated that it's connected to the serial port, which was automatically selected. And now I can go ahead and press the arrow here to uh, compile and upload the code to the microcontroller. Now that it's done flashing, we should be actually broadcasting these packets here. But we're going to have a hard time finding this if we don't know what channel to listen in on. So if you look at the actual sketch, you can see that this is pretty simple. There's a number of different packets that we're going to be transmitting. And there's also the ability to set the channel of the broadcast to a particular channel. In my case, the Wi-Fi network that I'm already connected to is on channel 11. So I modified this from one to broadcast on channel 11, just so I know where to be listening in for uh, these packets being broadcasted. So what are these packets? Well, these are a four-way handshake. So all the information we need to try to crack a Wi-Fi password, as well as a beacon frame. 
And the reason this is important is because the cracking tools we're going to use simply cannot recognize something that doesn't have any beacon frames that has the name of the network in it. Because if it lacks that piece of information, it wouldn't be able to basically put our password guesses through the algorithm necessary to create the hash to compare them against. So we really need the Wi-Fi network name in the beacon frame as well as the handshake in order to pull this off. And I was confused at first as to why this wasn't working, but after a little bit of research, I found out that this was why. So now I'm going to jump on over into Wireshark after unplugging my device. And in Wireshark, what I'm going to try to do is capture packets and make sure that I can actually successfully receive what I'm looking for. So I'm going to start Wireshark and I'm currently connected right to the correct network. I'll start running it and then I'm going to stop it at least for now. And what we're going to do is write a capture filter that will allow us to search for handshakes. So that is E-A-P-O-L. So ePoll will give us basically any handshakes and omit any other packets that aren't relevant. So we should only be seeing uh, handshakes for us to capture if we're scanning for ePoll. So let's go ahead and start again. And now we'll plug in our device and see if we're able to verify that we're broadcasting handshakes. There we go, lots of them. So as you can see, we are now getting lots and lots of different handshakes. I can go ahead and press stop. And this should be everything we need, but let's go ahead and click on one of these. We can see if I expand it, a little bit more information about it. And as I go through, I can scroll through and see that we have different keys. So between all these, we should have everything we need to hopefully crack the password. Now, how do we actually go about cracking the password? Well, first I'm going to need to save this. So in Wireshark, we're gonna to go to File, then Export Specified Packets. And then we're on the desktop going to put in a name after selecting the PCAP format. Save it here. And then I should be able to go in Finder to the desktop and locate what I just created. All right, so on the desktop, I now have a PCAP file. And what I'm going to do is in a terminal window, I'm going to use the aircrack ng command to attempt to locate any handshakes inside this file that are valid to crack. And for now, I'm going to get rid of the password list, but this would be the list that we would use if we wanted to actually attempt to crack. And I think that if it only detects one, it'll automatically attack it. So for now, I'm going to omit that. So let's go ahead and use this file. Let's run it and see if there's any valid handshakes in it. And as you can see, there is one with a valid handshake. So let's see if we can run the attack. I'll cancel for now, make a new window, and then run aircrack ng, the PCAP file. And then let's try putting the word list in here, run it, select option two. I guess we have to rearrange it. All right, let's put in the word list in the beginning. Here, we'll need to specify the word list. And in this case, it is on the desktop. We'll select option two. Now, if you get this issue and it says an ESSID is required, this is basically what I mentioned before. This means that you didn't manage to capture any beacon frames that contain the name of the network, which is necessary to try to crack it. So in this case, I actually wrote a bad filter and I was only including ePoll packets when I exported everything from Wireshark. So how do I fix this? Well, if I go back to Wireshark, I can actually just fix this by fixing my capture filter. So if I also include the transmitter address of the fake network, so I'm basically getting some beacon frames, as you can see here as well, then these beacon frames contain the name of the network under the tag parameters. You can see it's called test. And if I export these selected packets, then I should be able to actually get the information I need. Save it as a PCAP file to the desktop, and then let's try running this again. Let me make sure that this format is right. There we go, final test. All right, so we'll replace the PCAP file with the one that actually contains the beacon frames as well. And now when we run this, we can see we were able to successfully crack the network because we actually had the beacon frame necessary. Now, if I go back and I omit the word list, I should be able to see that we were successfully able to not only identify the handshake, 
but also identify the name of the network. As you can see here, we have a single valid handshake for the network called test, which we were able to generate by flashing the ESP8266 and Arduino. The ESP8266 microcontroller is a pretty incredible device. With it, we can play both sides of a Wi-Fi conversation and make it so we can practice Wi-Fi handshake cracking on a single microcontroller that costs about $2. Now, if you innovate on this, if you make your own game on it, please make sure to show it to me because I would love to see it. You can send me a message on Twitter at Cody Kinsey. And if you get confused, you can also check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description where there's also the opportunity to buy one of these boards if you want to follow along. That's all we have for this episode. We'll see you next time.